Uh, last week I was talking about uh, uh, faith as a mustard seed, and you know you're careful of time and you realise that you just got to quit now and then. But there's a lot of other, lot more that I wanted to bring, and so I want to just continue with that. If you don't mind, so I'm calling it faith as a mustard seed too. And uh, so, Father, we're just asking you today by your Spirit that, Lord, that uh, as Joe was sharing, Lord, that we would come under the action of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, that we would hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. And Lord, for that, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. So, in Matthew uh, chapter 17, and I'm going to read from verse 14 again, if you don't mind. It says, When they come to the multitude of men, came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, this is verse 14, 15 now. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely and he often falls into the fire, often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, now listen to this, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. You know, when I was reading this, I just started to think, why was Jesus upset with not only the disciples, but with the, with the man, obviously, that came to him? I believe it was because he saw that unbelief had crept into the hearts and the minds of people and that they were living so far below the standard that God wanted them to live in. He wanted them to be healed, he wanted them to be delivered, he wanted them to be free. But here they are, they're living in a, in a, in a passive uh, area of life, so far below where God wanted them to, to be. And then it says, Then Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for, or another word for unbelief there is your little faith. For assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not come, uh, does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now, as he said there, if you would understand, you would say to this mountain, uh, be removed, and it would go. And I want you just today, just for a little while, just to, to, to liken this to the, to the centurion soldier in uh, Matthew 8, verse 5, where, that, where Jesus came and, and the, the centurion soldier came to him and said, my servant is lying uh, sick, will you come and heal him? And he said, I will come. But then this, this centurion soldier just said something that really uh, touched Jesus in a great way because he said, I, I've not seen such great faith. Because this man had a key that I believe that every one of us has got to catch. And this key was, he said, I am a man under authority and I am a man of authority. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and I say to him, come, and he comes. And so he had an understanding, I believe, in this scripture that, uh, that I've just read to you before, that he said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you would speak to the mountains, you would speak to the disappointments of your life, you'd speak to the negativities or the sicknesses or the poverty or whatever it is, and that thing would move because you have authority over it. But you see, what happens is that the enemy gets in and we lose and we don't understand and unbelief gets into our lives and the reason that the disciples could not do what they should have been able to do was because of their little faith. Because of small faith or, or, or unbelief or whatever it might be. Church, I believe today that we must, we must start to build on our faith. We've got to start to grow, we've got to develop if we're really going to see what God wants us to see and if we're really going to live the scripture as God wants us to live. If, if, we, if we don't know what the Word of God says and if we don't uh, somehow or other believe it, well, we'll never ever experience things that God says we can experience. There's too many sick people today. There's too many people there that, that need a miracle. 
So I believe that this man uh, had an understanding, if you can like it, for this. Jesus didn't say, have faith the size of a mustard seed, but have faith as a mustard seed. Today, popular is it just need a little bit of faith. No, friend, we need great faith. How many people need great faith? Yeah. We need great faith. We need to uh, grow in our faith. If the mustard seed is allowed to develop, it becomes a great tree. If the portion of faith, the measure of faith, the Bible says every one of us has received a measure of faith. If the measure of faith that is in your life that you have now is allowed to develop, it will develop into great faith. But what happens is discouragement comes, disappointment comes, negativity comes, different things come and it erodes away and we start to stop believing God. Honestly, friends, we've got to start pushing through again. We're going to start trusting God again. We're going to start believing God again. We're going to start uh, expressing things and, and, and watching God move. Because I believe that it is very, very important. Uh, I believe that if that, that every one of us has this measure of faith, if it's allowed to develop, it will develop into a great tree. I believe understanding this particular uh, passage of Scripture is very, very important for us. And, and I, I want to liken it to John 3.16 to an unbeliever. This passage of Scripture that's found in the book of Matthew that I've been quoting there right now, to the believer is what will develop us and take us into what God wants us to go into. Just like an unbeliever that, that hears for the first time for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever would come to Him can be saved. That he can be delivered, that he can be set free, that he can have eternal life. That he can have a victorious living. And as people then grab hold of that, what happens is they get born again. And the Spirit of God comes into them and they've gone from death to life. And I believe now as Christians, as we read these scriptures, and as we read that God wants us to have faith as a mustard seed, Knowing that that faith that's in your life right now, if it's allowed to develop, will develop into great uh, faith. And then you'll be able to speak to that mountain, be able to speak to that thing, situation, that circumstance, whatever it might be, that gets around our lives, and that thing will go in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? How many people know that there really is a lack of faith in the church today? And you know, we can go through church, you can be in church, you can, you can do a lot of things and, and have no faith whatsoever. Never see anybody healed, never see anybody delivered, never, never see anything happen. But, you know, I believe that God wants it to happen. I believe that Matthew 7, uh, 17, 20 can take a believer into great faith. How many people want to go into great faith? Okay, let's have a, a quick look now at the book of Luke. Just take a, a bit of a, a detour here. Luke chapter 1. If you remember, I was speaking about Mary, and uh, it's, it's an amazing uh, scriptures here. Uh, as I find Luke chapter one, here it is. <coughs> Verse thirty. And behold, this is the angel came. Uh, let's go, go back to verse 30. Then the angel said to her, "Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God." An angel comes. Here's Mary, mind your own business. Doing going about a business, and, and all of a sudden an angel appears and, and it starts to speak to her. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over his, the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the, uh, of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Then he just continues on and talk, starts talking about uh, the, uh, Elizabeth. You see, the angel came with a promise. You will conceive and bring forth the Son of God. I don't know about, about you, but as Christians, what, what are we here for? What, what is the purpose of Christianity really? And as, as I saw in the beginning here, as Jesus is coming onto the planet, 
as God wants to, to bring forth a promise, I started to realize that really every one of us today, God puts a seed of hope, a seed of life into us, and He wants every one of us to bring forth Jesus. He wants you to bring forth Jesus out of your life. He wants you to be like Jesus. Amen. How many people believe that? And see, you know, when you get born again, you can see. Something is conceived inside your heart. Something comes into you. The Spirit of God comes into you. But now, if that's allowed to develop, then you'll, you'll bring forth Jesus. You'll, you'll be, if I can say it like this, you'll be Jesus to somebody. Jesus said, these things that I do, you shall do also. And greater things than this shall you do, because I go to my Father. Jesus wants uh, you, know, you to be the healer. He wants you to lay hands on people in the name of Jesus. He wants you to be His voice on this planet. He wants you to be His representative on this planet. He wants to show people. He wants you to show people the way, like He did. He wants. He said, "I only do the things that I see my Father do, and I want you to do only the things that you see me do." In other words, He wants us to be like like Him on this planet. But if it doesn't develop, we just become like we could just become another group of people in a, in, you know, in another club somewhere doing doing things that, that really don't bring forth anything. But I want to say this is Mary was there and, and, and you know Mary, he says, I want you're going to bring forth Jesus. And church, if, if that, that's our desire, isn't it? To bring forth Jesus to the world. Is that true? Am, am I talking silly talk here? Or is that, what, is that your desire too? How about you give me a wave so I know I'm talking to it? Is that okay? You're very quiet in this Presbyterian church this morning. <laughs> but, but that's what I believe. You know, see, uh, this promise, you, you shall call his name Jesus. I believe that's the desire, that's our, to be our desire, is to be the church's desire to bring forth Jesus in our lives and I believe that then will people will see. Now, faith has to be developed. Uh, just like, uh, he's not, oh, there he is. Shane, come up here, Shane. Let's do that again. I, I like that. Because just like, Shane, just, just do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, 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 uh, just see. Come up here. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, see, this is a work of, this is a, Work in progress. It's going to happen, isn't it? See, see, I want to tell you, I'm doing this for a purpose because you know, you're going to the gym, right? Another six months. Come on. I want, I want you to see something, and then we'll have a look at it in six months. Maybe you're in trouble. Because, you see, that didn't happen to Shane because he was eating cocoa pops. But how, how did it happen? How did it happen? It, 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 you see, what happens is, is he goes into the gym. He doesn't walk up to the, and see the, the strongest, the biggest, the best. There's, uh, I, it's very obvious I haven't been to the gym. <laughs> uh, pressing 300 kilos. Did they do that? So you don't walk up, up there. It's like, like, you better not go and do that because you're snapping up. <laughs> It'll kill me if I try to lift up 300 kilos. So you don't go, but what you do, you go and get something there and you start working on it, you start working on it, you start working on it, you just put a little bit extra butter on it. And I say, no, I said, <laughs> a little bit more bacon, amen, a little bit more, yeah. yeah. So you got to work on this, that doesn't happen overnight, amen. <laughs> Cocoa pops might help, but help me, but they won't help you. But, but what I'm saying is you, is you start to, Develop your faith. Develop your faith. Start to believe God. Start to believe for a car park. Start to believe for a car park in a busy shopping centre. If you're not having much luck, go at midnight. You're sure to get one. <laughs> you know I mean? Start doing something and get some, some success. Please don't go to the morgue and expect to get everybody raised from the dead. You, you can do that after, amen? Just develop your faith. Develop your faith. Start to, 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 to believe for a car park. Start to believe for something small. Start to believe for something there that, that, you can, that will happen. And, 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 I, and I believe that as you start to develop, I, I remember we were a bit silly when we were young Christians there. And, and uh, you know, I, I'd be driving along the car and, and, the, and the thing was red. And I'd say, I believe you're going to go green. I believe you're going to go green. You know, sometimes I have to wait a while, but eventually it went green. <laughs> 
not praise the Lord, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's better to do that than to fail all the time, you know what I mean? Trying to raise somebody from the dead. I remember when I wasn't saved very long and, and, uh, and I was overseas on a, on a mission and, and a guy died and, and I mean, I was in a mess. So I, I, I never seen a dead man so many times. That I was praying for him more than I don't know what, but man, I was scared stiff. Uh, you know, that, what, that was from where I was at. You can catch what I'm, what I'm saying, you know what I mean? I've seen some amazing miracles. I, I have seen some amazing things. You know, uh, John Mellor, that, that sees a lot of people saved, that sees a lot of people healed, he sees amazing miracles. I know John very, very well. John used to be one of my pastors. He was out at, uh, what's that town there? Is that Alice? Catherine. Catherine. Out at Catherine. And, uh, you know, you, you know him out of Catherine Catholic. He was just running a small church. And, and uh, you know, it was just running the church. Doing things there. What, what people do in church. And all of a sudden, a calamity came around his life. And, and, it, and it messed up his life. And, and he left the ministry and uh, uh, left the church. Right? Handed over the church to somebody else. And he was a mess. But what did he do? He went out and lived amongst the Aborigines. And, and he started to pray, he started to fast, he started to read his word, he started to cry out to God. And then month after month he was out there, month after month he was just crying out to God. And all of a sudden, that, that, that faith that he had, that measure of faith that he had, started to develop. Started to develop, started to grow, started to grow. He started to, to, to amongst the Aborigines here, he started to pray for a couple of sick people. And they started to get healed with a couple of headaches. A couple of this things, a couple of warts disappeared, a few other things started to go. It started to develop, it started to develop. And what is out there all of a sudden? There were people there that were but a major conditions were starting to get healed. He came out of that wilderness, out of that wilderness experience. He came out of that there, and then he came and hit the church scene. Today he is, he, I, I don't know if he's ever has a Sunday off, he's preaching all the time. He's in the newspapers, he's in the news, he's all over the place. The great things that God is doing through his life. But it didn't start off like that. You know, sometimes we just get the, we get the word of God, this is what it says, so let's do it. And it doesn't always happen like that. You've got to develop your faith. Develop your faith. You see, Mary, Mary was there and, and, the, and the angel came to Mary and, and said, Mary, this is what's going to happen. You're going to conceive. You're going to bring forth. And, and this is what's going to happen. And so Mary now, she's starting to look around. She's starting to say, what is going on? And, and the first thing that happened to Mary was she began to fear. You see, fear is, is going to will grip every person because it's asking us to do something that we can't do in the natural when you're asked to do something you know you can't do, usually fear grips your heart and, and you start to wonder what's going on. I remember when I did a great crusade over in, in Ukraine and, uh, and fear gripped my heart because of the, of the multitude of people and, and, and the responsibility and I'm thinking who do, you know, the, the enemy was putting thoughts in my mind, who do you think you are, you're a nobody, you're a nothing and here you are now, you're trying to be a big shot. And I was no big shot, I can tell you, I was down there in, in elevator shaft 74. I couldn't even see over my boot laces. And, and you know, you're there and, and, you're, and God just comes and, and helps you. And, and, and you start to see people saved and start to see the miracle power of God. And you get developed, you develop, you grow, you grow, you grow. I don't know any time, but especially when I was running Christian Outreach Center, uh, standing in front of 4,000 odd people uh, and, and, and not being terrified. The fear grips your heart and, and Mary, Mary was there, fear gripped my heart and, and, and all of a sudden this fear started to saying, my God. And then of course when he says you're going to come forth and she said, but how can this be? Seeing I know no man, I don't know a man. And of course then shame started to come into her life. What will people think of you? What will people say about you? People are going to say this. People are going to say that. You've got no, your husband. You're, 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 you're engaged to Joseph. Your mother won't understand it. Your father won't understand it. Joseph won't understand it. People won't understand it. Because we know that Joseph wanted to put it away privately because of the shame. You know, just, you know when, when God starts to talk to you, all these things start coming. All these things start attacking you and, 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 and you know, she's there and she's trying to, my God, I don't know, what's going to happen? What will people think of me? How, how am I going to do this? And, 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 you know, all of a sudden she, he starts telling her about, uh, about Elizabeth. You know, she knew Elizabeth and she knew that actually they, 
I'm, I'm not too sure on this, but I think that they called it barren. I'm not too sure whether the word Elizabeth means barren or not. I'm not too sure about that. But, but, but it says that they called her barren. They called Elizabeth barren. She was known as the barren woman. She was known as a woman that never brought forth. She was known as a woman that didn't, never could conceive. She was known as that woman. And Mary knew her as that woman. And Jesus said to her, Mary, your, what if she argued or something, or a cousin? She said, she's, she's now pregnant, and she's now going to come forth. And then he said these words to her, with God nothing is impossible. Yeah. And Mary then, as, as, she, as their faith starts to write, you see, she started, she had to start to work on the measure of faith that she had. She, she went through all the things that says there, you know, how can this be? What's going to happen? All that sort of stuff. And, and then, well, then she says, but according to your word, be it unto me. According to your word, be it unto me. And, and, and it wasn't over then. She would have had that. She, then she went through the, the rejection. Then she went through the whatever else she had to go through. But she went through a lot of stuff in there. And that, you know, it has to be developed. Develop your faith. Don't just go to the morgue and expect to get everybody out of, the, out of their grave or whatever it might be. Mary had to develop her faith. She had to break fear. She had to break unbelief. She had to break different things. But she had a revelation. I don't know about you, but oh, that's what I want, a revelation. Yeah. People perish for lack of knowledge. People perish when there's, there, there's, there's no, no, no truth in, in, in what we're not really seeing, the truth in what, we, what we're hearing. You know, you've got to develop your faith. You develop your faith, I, I believe, uh, you know, according to your word, be it under me. You develop your faith. Uh, by praying in the Holy Spirit, by praying in tongues. Everybody have a little tongues. You need to hear some praying in tongues. You need to let the Spirit, you need to pray in the Spirit. I let the Spirit of God. I, I believe tongues is becoming a lost art in the church today. People, some pastors are, are embarrassed about tongues. The Bible says that tongues is a sign of the unbeliever. They're scared that tongues will frighten off an unbeliever. I've told this story many times about my mother uh, that came to church with me and, 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 I, and I realized when I got her there, I thought, my God, once I got her there, I thought, my God, I hope that we speak in tongues. <laughs> so Sunday night, I thought that was pretty safe. Sunday night, we don't hear too much of that. But anyhow, I, I said, God, whatever you do, God, you, this is my mother here. Please don't let anybody talk in tongues. Like, as if God was even listening to me. Here you go. I'll do it my way, boy. And then, you know, right behind my mother, right behind her, this guy stood up. They didn't even do it sitting down. He stood up and shouted tongues the loudest I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, he shouted out, oh, you blunt. You blunt. That's the end of that. Anyhow, the preacher got up and preached and made an altar call. Mum put her hand up, stood up, went out the front, got born again. On the way home, she said, that's a lovely church you go to. I said, oh, it is. <laughs> lovely church. Um, she said, you know what really impressed me? I said, what? She said that that Italian man could stand up and his own hand. I thought, I don't know you know about tongues. <laughs> she didn't know tongues from anything. <laughs> She never heard him. I never told her about tongues. Nobody told her about tongues. She never read the, read the Bible, most probably. But that's all I tell you, man. He get up and pray in his own language. What a great church that was. Yeah, that's a good idea, man. <laughs> Later on, she got full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Another, another way to develop your faith, I believe, is the worship and praise. And, and sense the presence of God. And, you know, another way is to respond to God, even if catch him. Can get touched by God, amen? <laughs> now, they're the things, and I, 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 I'm going to repeat a few things, but, but there are things there that have grown my faith, that have helped me to, to develop, helped me to go beyond uh, where, where the enemy wanted me to be. And, and you know, just, just, just being touched by God, but touched by the Holy Spirit, then, you know, the first time I got slain in the Spirit was an amazing thing that the presence of God touched me. Just, just allowing the presence of God to, to touch your life. Responding to God. Responding and allowing the anointing to touch your life. 
The anointing, the anointing, the anointing breaks the yokes, amen. Develops your life. Does amazing things. We went to, we went to, uh, to uh, Canada and they, 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 they had a big banner. When I was coming off the plane, they had a big banner across the, 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 the street, the main street. Healing evangelists comes to town. And I'm sitting in the car and I said to the people driving me, I said, Oh, they got another evangelist. They got an evangelist in town. They said, Yeah, you. I said, oh. <laughs> Healing evangelists had come and heal the sick. And then they showed me when I got there, they had a full page ad of miracle healings that will take place. This church was normally about 50 people, had over 250 people came that day. They were sick there and I thought, My God. Anyhow, we, we preached and, and we did our people, got, I don't know how many people, but dozens and dozens and dozens of people had miracles and healings and people got saved. We couldn't close the meeting down. They'd stop and people would come back and, and, and say, would you pray for me? Would you do this? And, and people were getting saved. I tell you what, that develops your faith. They meant you should realize it's got nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with him. If I can just trust and obey, if you just turn up, and do what God tells you to do, guess what? And it develops your faith. It develops, everybody say, it develops your faith. I don't know about you, but I want my faith to be developed. Develop my faith. The different ways to develop your faith. Worship and praise. God inhabits the praise of new people. Another, another is to read the Word of God. Read God's Word. See what God says about you and what you can do. And, and I want to tell you, you've got to do it in the Holy Ghost. Get a revelation. Get a fresh revelation. Who do men say that I the son of man am? Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say this. But who do you say? And this man stood up because he all of a sudden he had a revelation. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You know what Jesus said? He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. How many people want a revelation from your Father in heaven? About the circumstance, about the situation about what God's doing today. Friend, if we can procrastinate, we can go down the gurgle, we can just slip away. But I would tell you, I believe that God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask of Him. Praying in the Spirit. You know, praying uh, in, the, in the mighty Holy Spirit. The Bible says, pray in the Holy Ghost and build up your most holy faith. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Another way I believe is fasting. And that's a... We don't like that one. Matthew 17, uh, 19 and 21 says, This one does not come out by prayer and fasting. I remember I was going down the, the road one day there and I was thinking about fasting. And I'm thinking, oh man, you got to fast. And this, I don't like fasting, obviously. And then I looked up and I saw McDonald's and had fast food. I said, praise God. <laughs> That's the food you eat when you're fasting. <laughs> you know what? That, that, as stupid as that sounds, there are other things where it's just as stupid that we believe, amen. There are other things just as stupid that we believe, amen, about a lot of subjects. Amen. I'm not going to wait them all now because I'll be here all day and Joe will come back. I, be I believe, I believe, uh, you know, fasting is, is very, very important. Jesus fasted him. Went in the wilderness, he was fasting for 40 days. But Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Not in his own strength, but he returned in the power of the Spirit. There's something about fasting, there's something about praying, there's something about praying in the Holy Ghost that builds you up, that strengthens you, that you, you just go out there and, and you go back in the power, the power of the Spirit of God. you believe that today? I believe that. See, at, at Calvary, Jesus invested God invested, Jesus invested in us through His Son's death. Jesus really invested something amazing. God invested, He gave, he gave His life. God sent His Son to die that we could live. God, I've got to realize, God invested in me. If, you, if you're a man or a woman here that, that's in business or that does investments, you know that when you put an investment, when you invest something, you expect something to come out of that investment. Is that correct? You don't expect it to wither and die. You don't expect it, like, you don't, you don't go and put, say, a million dollars into a project and then just forget about it. 
You don't, you don't, you don't just say, oh, well, that was, I, I did that, and now no, I praise God. No, you, you, you watch over it. You nurture it. You, you keep your eye on it. You, you, you're watching how it's going. You're, you're watching the stocks. You're watching it grow. You're watching your, the grass. You're doing, you're doing everything you can. God invested into this world His only begotten Son. And I want to tell you, He watches over His investment. And He doesn't want us to forget what He's invested in us. He doesn't want us to uh, forget the benefits of, of His salvation. He doesn't want us to forget all that stuff. He wants to remind us. And the only way He will remind us, He won't remind you if you're just sitting around uh, playing whatever you want. But if you're praying, if you're fasting, if you're seeking God, if you're crying out to God, I want to tell you that still small voice will get into your mind and get into your heart and reveal the truth of God into you and you'll grab hold of something like that because God wants that investment to grow. His desire is that none should perish. On the day of Pentecost, He sealed us with the mighty Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, He poured out His Spirit upon us. Amen. What an amazing thing. He invested His, his Son into us. He invested something in Him. I, I, I'll tell you what, that, 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 that blows my mind. Into this world that God invested, He's watching over that investment. He's caring for that investment. He wants to see it grow. He wants to see it develop. He's going he's to get His reward. Now on that day of Pentecost, he came in with power. A bunch of guys there, all of a sudden, they're, they're consumed, as Joe was talking about. Had that encounter with God. Something there that changed their lives forever. And the Holy Spirit power came in. What an amazing day. Next day, Peter and John go up the gate, beautiful. They start to share the outpouring that God brought. And that's, we've got to go out there and start sharing. Sharing. We build your faith up. Build your faith up. The disciples had to build their faith. They, were, they, they wanted to reject Jesus. They, Jesus, Peter denied knowing Christ. But he had to build his faith up. Build his faith up until he got to a point that he had so much uh, uh, faith and so much belief in his life, he was a losing, uh, saturated, marinated, Holy Ghost power man that his very shadow touched people and know him. God doesn't want us to just stay in little faith. Nowhere did that scripture say, have faith the size of a mustard seed. It said, have faith as a mustard seed. Allowed to develop. I wonder how many mustard seeds have, have never become a tree. I wonder how many mustard seeds have never ever developed. I wonder how many mustard seeds started to grow but then got bombs on it. The devil just trimming you. And there you are, you look like a mustard, mustard tree or whatever it is, but you are bombs on it. I don't want to be bombs on it, amen. Anybody else want to be bonds on that? <laughs> oh, bonds on that. Amen. I will let it rip. Let it rip. Amen. I, I believe that God wants us to have faith without limit. Faith without limit. Amen. That's a good sign to quit. <laughs> Glory to God. Where are you at today? Where, where are we all at? Where, where, what's going on? I, I don't know, but I, I believe that God has given every one of us a measure of faith. I believe that God wants to develop our faith. I believe the way to develop our faith, obviously, is number one is you've got to pray, you've got to read your word, you've got to pray in tongues, you've got to... All those sort of things that God tells us to do. But then you've got to start to demonstrate. You've got to go out there and lay hands on somebody. Pray for somebody that's got a headache. Pray, say, if there's somebody there, even if it is a major thing, can I pray? Can I pray for you? You mind if I pray with you? Can I pray? Let's believe God. Let's believe God.